instead of spending a ridiculous amount of money to build a big workshop that's probably just going to accumulate a bunch of junk anyway, and to avoid a bunch of ridiculous county building regulations, I decided to take a more simple approach because I believe in keeping life simple so I can focus on the important things. If you've watched some of my videos, you may have noticed this shipping container in the background. Not to be confused with that one over there. That other one is actually more interesting than this one, but we'll do another video about that one another day. I know I said that a while back, but it's coming up. I originally bought this one to do what I ended up doing with that one. But before I was able to do what I did with that one, I ended up putting a bunch of stuff in this container. And I decided I really like this shipping container for storage. Then I bought that other one to do what I eventually did with that other one. This property is just undeveloped forest land, but I spend a lot of my time here. I have my sawmill here, I spend time working with the forest, and I have just the crude beginnings of a homestead here. What I want to do is take this shipping container and upgrade it from just storage to an actual workshop that I actually have some space to do things in. Some of the things I like about shipping containers, they're bug proof, rodent proof, weather proof. In a wildfire prone place like this, they're fire resistant. And if I decide I want to do something different, I can easily sell it, get my money back, and it'll just go away. No demolition, no disposal needed. Of course, it's not going to be big enough that I can bring tractors and equipment and vehicles in to work on them, but I just don't spend that much time working on these things. Instead of buying a used container, I bought a new one. A lot of times the used ones are dented up, they're rusty. There's usually a reason why the shipping companies decided to retire them. What they call new ones, they're only used once. They're built in China, then they ship something over here, then they sell them as new. The new ones cost more, but I think it's well worth it. It's just a really nice container. There's no dents, the paint's still good. I'm glad I went that route. I think it's well worth the extra money. The first thing I need to do is put some shelves in here. Then I can start getting things organized in here. I need these ones to be very heavy duty because I have a lot of heavy things to put in them. These kind of things. Really heavy, manly things. And for all of these kind of things, some ridiculous three quarter inch particle board or one by material just isn't going to cut it. So we're going to make some real manly shelves. In the first part of this series, we cut down the trees to make these shelves. On the second part, we milled them up on the wood miser. Now we're going to put the shelves together. It's starting to get chilly, so I had to put my coat and hat on. Now we are going to use one by material on the floor, just because that's supported by the floor. One of the things that makes these shells manly is they're simple, crude, durable, but functional. Kind of like us. Make sure these are centered. And square. After all, I may be simple, but I'm no barbarian. Are those some handsome looking shelves or what? 
Maybe I should get into interior decorating. What do you think? Are they a little bit ridiculous? Are they a little bit wasteful? Yeah, that's part of what gives them their charm. Kind of like us men. Look at that. Isn't that nice? There's a place for my chokers and my chains, binders, implements of manipulation, sandblasting hoses and equipment. This is exciting. On the bottom I have space for all my long lines, every type of trailer hitch you can imagine, my blocks and pulling tools, large wrenches, toolboxes, an empty space. Here I'll put my chainsaw oil and other oils. That is the oil that I have that is not in five gallon buckets. But I'm done for the day, so I'll do that another time. Shelves like these would be great in a garage or a shed. These are made out of full dimension, two inch material. You could also make this entirely out of two by sixes from the store. They just won't be as cool as these full dimension, but it'll still work. If you don't have big chunks of wood like this, you can just take two by sixes and stack them. Make a block out of them that way. You could even put this in the house. Imagine this in the living room. Not with all this stuff in it, but with nice house things in it. Normal house things. For you guys, if you have a wife, a girlfriend, she might object to this being in the house. I don't know why. Some people just don't have the decorating sense that we men do. You could even do this out of concrete block. Just concrete block and two by sixes. If it seems like this is a little bit wasteful, yeah, maybe it is, but all this wood came from dead trees that I was just going to leave because I thought they were too far gone to make good sellable lumber. A lot of this has cracks, bug holes, discoloring for where the beginnings of decay was about to start. It's not really sellable lumber, but it's good enough for this. And in here where space is limited, it might seem like it's taking up a lot of space. I figured out how much wood is actually here, and the volume of the wood itself is only 3% of the container space. When I subtract that, I still have 97% of actual space in here and in the rest of the container. These are just set in place. They're not actually fastened together, but they're very sturdy. You could take some lag bolts or some heavy screws and drill them through each of the two bys into these pieces. That would make it stronger. Or you could take some one by sixes and put along here and lag into them that way. One of the advantages of getting this wood out of these trees that have been dead for a long time is they're well on their way to being dry. There's still a little moisture. They'll still probably move a little bit as they dry. I'll just have to keep an eye on them, make sure it doesn't become too wobbly. And if the Cascadia subduction zone slips and the West Coast has a nine point earthquake, this could be a problem, but if that happens, these shelves will probably be the least of our problems. I may come back in here and reinforce these. Yeah, right. One of the advantages of these shelves is these are just eight foot pieces. They're left long. They're not cut. They're not drilled. They're not nailed. If I don't want these shelves anymore, I can just take it apart and I can use these for something else and use it just as if it was new wood. And if I don't like this configuration, if I want more space or less space in some, it's not that difficult to take them apart and rearrange them. That's another manly thing about these shelves. Nothing is actually being committed here, which is pretty manly. We men just aren't that into making commitments if we don't have to. I also want to put a workbench in here. I'm either going to do it over here or probably more likely over here. I think I'll put some maybe slightly less manly shelves over there. Then this whole end will be storage. And this end will be mostly open space, hopefully. If this video does okay, and if there's interest, maybe we'll do a manly workbench build one day. I can picture somebody suggesting that I should insulate this container because of moisture problems. Shipping containers are known for holding in moisture, but I've been using this container for storage for a couple of years now, and there just hasn't been any moisture problems. These single-use containers do have some air vents. But if it ever does become a problem, then I'll start to look into maybe insulating it. I'm done for today. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.